plugging in with the 1926 Kissel Brome restoration. And what you're looking at here is a Firestone nut. Firestone nut for the actual attachment of the rim to the wheel is a specialized nut that's rounded on both sides. So you can't go down to the hardware store and buy one, you have to make one. Taking some three quarters hex stock here, cutting it off with a cutoff tool so that we have something as a basis to make the actual nut. The inside is going to be 7 16 14, the outside 3 quarters of an inch. Once it's cut off, of course, we're going to put in a little miniature Sherline lathe and actually make the part. Being six sided, it works really well just to chuck up in a three jaw chuck. And we're going to get all set up here. Now, in order to deal with it, obviously, when you cut off the end of it with a grinder, you're going to need to face the end. So I'm going to set up and face the end with a carbide cut on cutting tool and gradually work it down to where we have a nice flat surface to start with. Even though on the end I'm going to have to round both ends, it's nice to start with a flat surface, get things all nice and perfect so that we can actually center drill it appropriately in a little bit. Now as I said, a Firestone nut's rounded on both sides and I was short exactly one nut. No matter what I did, looked everywhere, one nut short, so I had to actually make the nut in this case. Not something you routinely find nowadays. As you can see when I'm cutting it off, I like to use a little cutting oil. In this case, 3-in-1 household oil works pretty good for the job. And just a slow job of gradually taking the end down to where it's going to be nice and flat. And it took several minutes, a lot longer than the clips you're seeing here in order to get it done. So it turned out appropriately. You notice I'm turning the hand wheel with two hands there reason I did that is because it actually produces a smoother cut than trying to turn it with that little hand crank which sort of wobbles the system on this small Sherline lathe. Right here I'm center drilling the piece. You know, ultimately it would be 7 16 14 thread but we're starting with just a center drill so that we get it exactly centered on the part relative to the exterior of the nut. And after the center drill, we're going to change over to an actual regular twist drill to drill through. Never works to use anything but a center drill when you start. If you start with a twist drill, the odds favor you will not be able to keep the center of the part. Center drills, of course, work because they're short and stubby and designed specifically for finding the center. And as you can see here, we're working our way in with a small drill. And I'm actually going to over drill it and drill it all the way through. There's no reason for that, but I drilled it further than the depth I needed to for the actual finished nut. And as we finish that, we're going to switch to another drill bit size, go up, so that we can work our way up instead of trying to drill it with one giant drill at once. So here we are with another drill bit size. I'm going to drill it in again, over drilling it using the three in one oil in order to make it easier to do the drilling and getting a nice enlarged hole this way. Chips are coming out nicely with it. And usually when I'm doing about this size, I'm using about 600 RPM at the most, somewhere between 300 and 600 is the range. It's really good for drilling. So we're probably looking at the range really most likely 500 when I did this. Works very well and you can see getting very good results with the actual drilling. The drills in this case are coated drill bits and they seem to work a little better than the standard drills. I have an entire set includes both the letter drills and the regular drills so that you can work your way up. This is a 3 8 based set. Now I'm actually using the smaller of the two chucks I use with this this is the chuck that comes from Sherline. I also have a much larger chuck. You see I've switched to it now. That's a 3 8 chuck that I can mount into the system and allows me to take the bigger drill bits than the standard Sherline chuck. And as you can see, I'm getting it drilled out to the appropriate interior size so that I can actually thread, as I said, 7 16 14 when I'm done. Now one of the things people seem to forget, in the 21st century all you have to do is punch up on your phone if you get a smartphone and you can find out exactly what drill bit size is correct for 7 16 14 tap. 
and find that on the internet in just a few seconds and then do that. Here you'll see I'm using the caliper and used a black marker sharpie in order to mark the distance that I need and verify the distance is right so I can actually cut the part off. And one thing that should be noted at this point, even though I didn't bother to show it for you, I actually have rounded the side towards us just a bit after I drilled it and the rounding was necessary to get the round portion of the nut. The nut must be rounded because to fit in the Firestone Keeper, it has to be rounded on each end. I suppose you could round one end, but Firestone did both of them, so regardless of which way you put it on, it was still going to work. And here I'm working through with a cutoff tool to get it cut off so I can actually turn the other side rounded also so it could ultimately be properly threaded. And the cutoff tool in a sure line is about the most annoying thing I ever have to do. You have to be very, very careful, very, very slow. And it takes a number of times doing it, usually in between. I might drop some oil on it, but I never use oil when I first start it. If you use oil initially, you're going to find that it'll just skip around. So you got to wait till you're part way in before you add the oil. Here you can see I'm working on putting the angle on one side. As I said, I didn't show you the other side, but this does show you what the angle going on is like. And really all I did to do this was take the original Firestone that I was using as a model and put it on the end of it there and set the angle using the Firestone nut to set the angle of the cutter head. Now here you're also seeing I'm doing a little final cleanup of the file. You have to be very, very careful when you do that but it's necessary in order to make everything look just about perfect. Now here you see I'm threading at 7 16 14 as I said. And notice I'm using the tap in a tap holder and using the tailstock to get this all lined up and working it by hand. It's sort of a Rube, Rube Goldberg setup, but it works very well actually and results in it being dead in line. Now you see I've switched from doing it in line on the lathe, took it down to the garage, and I'm using the vise to finish it because the amount of force necessary to do a 7 16 14 in steel is too much for the little lathe, but it allowed me to start it dead straight. What you're seeing here is I actually took the finished part and threw it in the tumbler overnight. The reason I did that was because the part's actually a little too nice. Usually I'm doing this to make old parts look good, but here it's been put in overnight just to actually put a little wear on it and round it off so it looked just as like the older ones, all the rest of them on the car. So it's actually been put through the tumbler overnight right there. So you can see the finished nut looks like that. And it looks basically identical to the original nuts. And you can see side by side, virtually can't tell the difference. Like and subscribe. See you later.